In this video, we're going to look at scriptable objects in Unity. These are objects you can create in your project files that can be used to store any kind of data and make your game more designer friendly. Extremely useful for storing level data, enemy data, weapon data, and just about anything. We're going to learn how they work, and then later we're going to apply them to systems we made previously, like the crafting system. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so scriptable objects are an excellent feature that makes your game much more designer friendly. Essentially, they are simply containers of data. You define the various fields you want your object to have, then you create instances of that object in your project files and set those fields to whatever you want. The key point is you define and store all that data in discrete objects in your project files, rather than having all of that written directly in the code. If you want to make your game more designer friendly, then scriptable objects are the way to go. Okay, so here we're going to learn the basics on how to define and create scriptable objects, and then later on we're going to take what we learn here and apply it to the crafting system that we made previously. So the items will be defined as scriptable objects, as well as the crafting recipes. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so in here let's make a very simple scriptable object. Now down here in our project files let's create a new c -sharp script. Call this our test scriptable object. And let's open it. Okay, now here we have our default Unity code. Now the first thing we do is let's get rid of all these methods. And in here, instead of extending mono behavior, we're going to extend scriptable object. And just like this, we already have a class that we can use as a scriptable object. Now, like I said, they are containers of data, and how you define whatever data you want to store is by defining some fields. So in here, let's define a public string, call it my string. Okay, now we have a scriptable object with a simple string field. Now let's see how we can create an instance of our scriptable object. Now to do that, we go up here to our class definition, and we're going to add the attribute create asset menu. Then we have three optional parameters. So first of all, let's define the file name. So this is going to be the default file name whenever we create an object. So in this case, let's just call it the same name. So test scriptable object. Then we have the menu name. So this is where it will show up on the create asset menu. So in this case, let's create a scriptable objects folder. So we create a folder by simply putting a forward slash at the end. And then let's call it test scriptable object. And lastly, if you want, you can add the order attribute or it doesn't matter. So let's just ignore that one. All right, so that's it. Over here, we have the most basic scriptable object definition possible. We just extend scriptable object, we define our fields and we add the create asset menu attribute. And now if we go back into the editor, now in here on our assets folder, I can right click, go into create, and yep, over here we see scriptable objects, our very nice folder, and inside we can create a test scriptable object. So just click on it, and yep, it starts off with our default name, and for now, yep, just leave it named like that. All right, so here we have our scriptable object, and we can see all the fields that we defined, so in this case, just a simple string. So in here, let's just write some text. All right, there it is. And now this scriptable object has been saved with this data. Okay, now let's see how we can use this. All right, so in here, let's create the new C-sharp script. Call this just testing. Let's create an object to run it and drag the script, okay. Now here, let's start off by adding a field for our scriptable object type. So we're going to make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. Let's make it a private of type test scriptable object. And then on the private void start, let's simply do a debug log on the test scriptable object and we access my string. All right, so there it is, very simple. Now back in the editor, yep, over here we have a field of type test scriptable object. So we can drag our specific scriptable object, yep, and let's try. And yep, over here we can see our very nice message. So we access the scriptable object and grab the data from it. So now to see how this is useful, we can duplicate this scriptable object. So we make a second scriptable object. And over here, we give it a different string. All right, and now go back into our testing script and then just use this scriptable object instead. And if we run, 
Yep, there you go, now we have the different message. So we have two different scriptable objects, each with their own instance of data, and then we have our script, which works with that scriptable object type. All right, awesome. So here we can see the most basic usage of scriptable objects. We define our object with whatever fields we want. So here, for example, we have a simple string, but we could add, for example, let's say a public int for an int field. Then we could also, for example, add a sprite array. So we can add whatever fields we want to store whatever data we require. And if we look in the editor and select our scriptable object, yep, there you go, here we have all of our fields and we can set them to anything. So for example, on this one, I can set two elements on this array. And then on this second one, I can select five elements. So yep, there you go, each of them has the same format, but different data. So we can create as many instances of this type of object as we want in order to store whatever data we need. So just like this, you can already imagine the possibilities. So for example, if you have an item, you would have a string for the item name, then you would have a sprite field for the visual and so on. Another example is if you had a grid system like the one we made previously, you could use a scriptable object to define the size of the grid and all of its attributes. So you can see how they are extremely versatile. Now, one key thing about scriptable objects is the difference between how data persists in the editor or in a build. While you're running in the editor, any changes you make to the scriptable object won't be saved on the actual asset. So if you're running the game and you have a scriptable object for the player max health and you change that, the new value won't be saved to the asset and won't be used the next time that you hit play. However, when playing on a build, the changes are not persistent. So if you modify the scriptable object while playing the build and close and reopen it again, it will go back to the original value. So whatever value you set on the scriptable object when you made the build will always be the starting value when you actually open the game. And since you can edit them and save the changes while working in the editor, another usage for scriptable object is for building editor tools. Now another important thing about scriptable objects is related to the type of object they are. Scriptable objects work as references. So over here we have our testing script and we have a field for our scriptable object. So when we set it over here in the editor, what it gets is a reference to the scriptable object instead of a copy of that data. So this has several implications. Now it means that these scriptable objects can help you reduce the memory footprint of your game. So for example, if you have a prefab for each enemy and they contain lots of data in their weapon, if you instantiate that prefab, it will constantly duplicate the data for that weapon. However, if that weapon data is stored as a scriptable object, then in terms of memory, when you instantiate an enemy, it will simply have a reference to the scriptable object. So it ends up with no duplicated memory. When you have a game with lots of enemies and memory issues, this can turn into huge savings. All right, so again, here we just saw the basics. So this is just one example. Scriptable objects can be used for just about anything. In fact, you've almost certainly used scriptable objects without even knowing it. Like I said, they can be used for building editor tools and many Unity features and editor tools use scriptable objects to handle their data. So for example, one of the things is the universal render pipeline asset. So this is one example of a scriptable object and everything here is made with a custom editor. Another example is over here, a post-processing profile, which once again, all of this data is stored using a scriptable object. So you can see how even without knowing about scriptable objects, you've already used them. So if you're making your own custom tools, you can use scriptable objects combined with custom editors to manage whatever data you need to save. All right, so that's the basics. Now in the next video, we're going to apply what we learned here and modify our previously made inventory and crafting systems to work with scriptable objects. So we're going to create some really nice designer friendly objects to create each item and each recipe. So go ahead and hit the bell icon to be notified when that video comes out, which should be soon. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions, have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.